Welcome back to the show, everyone. It's Dina Calmetti here and Susan Davis with Jesus 24-7. And today we're going to continue in our End Times News Report, week beginning July 2nd through July 8th, 2023. Welcome back to the show, Susan. Well, thanks so much, Dina. Uh, glad to be back. And we're here to review the past seven days of news events around the world that actually line up with what the Bible said would be happening in these end times. And so we are jam-packed with news. And I think it's because of something we talk about frequently on this show is that we are in something called the birth pains, which is how the Lord describes it in the Bible, that it'll be like birth pains. And, you know, we know how that works with uh, women that, that are about to have children. They're in labor. Those birth pains, they start coming closer together and stronger. That, that's why they call them labor pains. So <laughs> we're actually and literally seeing, you know, the world uh, experiencing this. And that's why each week it's getting harder and harder for us to cover all the news because there's so much of it going on right now. What we're going to try to do is just, you know, narrow it down to uh, what we can fit into this time frame. So we need to get started and we will get going on this. Okay, well, let's take a look right out of the gate. We have so much news. It, this is only seven days worth of news, by the way, most of it. So what has transpired in seven days since we were talking to you all the last time? Well, let's take a look. There was a government study that came out and it says nearly half of United States tap water is contaminated with forever chemicals. Oh, great, right? That's, That's not good. No, not at all. Just one other thing, you know, that we have to contend with, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so Peru makes the news this week with declaring a state of emergency over Ubinus Volcano after 17 blasts and 170 quakes in two days' time frame this week. That's a lot of activity, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then the question always arises, you know, why in the world do people live near volcanoes, right? <laughs> but they do, and so, you know, it's going to happen. But, yeah, they're in a state of emergency. But now, that's not to say that Iceland can be outdone because they had more than 4,700 earthquakes detected in a 48-hour period, and that was in Iceland this week. That's a lot of earthquake activity. Yes, it is. Isn't that something? Yes. I know. Crazy. Wow. Talk about birthing pains. I know. I know. Earthquakes in diverse places, the Bible said. Remember? Yep. Uh-huh. And, okay, we will get into this a little bit, but I want to bring this up. You know, France this week has been under fire. Police officer, I think, killed a 17-year-old boy in his car, an immigrant. And now the whole France is, you know, in chaos and rioting in the streets, fires and everything. Have you, you've caught a lot of this, I'm yes. sure. Yes. Yes, it's distress of nations. That's, mm -hmm. that's prophetic. And then, yeah, Macron, their prime minister over there, leader, who is, I don't know, I, I think he's evil myself. <laughs> that's, that's my take on him, you know, but it's each his own. But um, he he's basically said, well, these kids are spending too much time in front of video games, and that's why they're out on the street doing this. And, okay, you know, it's... It's still a problem. It doesn't matter how you define it. Uh, they've got a big problem. Here's one of the ways. They want to shut down their internet, for one thing. And now they are voting to adopt a program called uh, the Activation of Snitch Phones. They want to adopt this in their National Assembly. And basically, so that they can authorize remote triggering of cameras or microphones or of computers and other connected devices, such as telephones, without the knowledge of the persons concerned, with two different purposes. On one hand, real-time geolocation for certain offenses, 
And on the other hand, the activation of microphones and cameras to capture sound and images, which would be reserved for cases of terrorism and delinquency and organized crime. Okay, it all sounds good on paper, but yeah, you know, you have to ask yourself, nothing could go wrong with that kind of power, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's actually illegal in the U.S. You can't Mm -hmm. uh, record or you can't record somebody without their knowledge. Right. So, yeah, they're saying, you know, based on the 1984 novel by George Orwell, we we are far from the totalitarianism of 1984. Well, not anymore. So... Yeah, things are moving fast now. You know, technology is great, but it always has the component of the possibility of misuse. Right, Dina? Yes. And that's exactly the juncture we're at leaping into on so many levels of technology now, is we're starting to see great progress in technology in which people feel like oh look at all these wonderful marvelous marvelous inventions and things that are going on but now we're starting to see a turn of events in which these technologies are turning into being used in a threatening way for people right and so we're really seeing that all over the place and we're going to get a little bit more into that later in the show but they had a huge fire at a lithium plant in the community making the community sick in charlotte north carolina this week well dina look at this headline hailstorm affects more than 20,000 hectares of crops in valencia and castellan of spain Okay, and this is something that you're going to find on our page on Facebook called End Times Famine. I was going to say that this is famine related. Absolutely. Right. So please go over there and check that out. All right. This comes from the United Nation who has addressed what's going on around the world. Finally, they're sitting up and paying attention. They're saying terrifying famines, floods, fires ahead unless climate change is addressed, warns the U.S and rights chief. Okay, this stuff's been going on for a while. And finally, you know, somebody's sitting up and going, I think we, we've got a problem here, Houston. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the answer is not a climate change situation. It's a God change, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> if they would just understand the spiritual angle of this, but they can't see that. They have scales on their eyes, and so they're going to classify it as climate change. And I always say, yeah, the climate has changed. People no longer, you know, respect God. That's the, you know, that that's the true climate change. But, you know, all this is resulting from a world that is full of God haters. And the Bible says, scripturally, the Bible says in the last days, men would be haters of God. And that is where we are now. There's no question. All right. Well, this was a bit of a shocking sight. King of Bahrain arrived at an industrial event that he was visiting in Dubai. And now he has a robot bodyguard. Now, this is just shocking. Uh, Talk about fourth industrial revolution. This thing can speak six languages. It can rescue him, literally carrying him from mobs. It can physically fight, chase, and shoot. It's armed with an electric taser, has undisclosed 360-degree camera system, and it's secondary to a set of infrared cameras. Three hidden machine guns with enough ammo to fight 1,050 men and a laser-guided sniper machine gun. It also carries medications and water, and his guard is cost him about 7.4 million. Okay, so that's a little toy he plays wow. with, right? Wow, yeah. <laughs> dangerous though that could be dangerous oh my word that that could that right there could start a war by itself that thing i i and if you see it in this picture it's it's just oh it's horrible it's a horrible thing to see this thing walking behind this guy and okay so it just you know this just goes back to what i said when they start making these robots oh nothing can go wrong with that right dina (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's going to be no problem. No, it was just a matter of time, okay? Let's arm those robots, right? Anyway, so we continue to talk about that topic. Well, Tina, we continue to see smoke heading from Canada, now moving over towards, you know, Europe. The heavy fires in Canada, they're all over the place. 
across the, the whole scope of Canada. And I had read that one of the reasons that they're struggling to put these fires out is that so many of them are in really remote areas. Oh. In, yeah. And hard to get to with equipment. Like, you know, if you've got a, a fire taking place in a very, you know, difficult location that's not got a lot of roads leading up to it because we're not used to being in areas like Canada that has, you know, that is so isolated the way it is, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it, it it would seem like it'd be easier to deal with this stuff, but uh, not, not as easy as you would think, especially the upper parts of Canada. And so that's, that's why a lot of this is still going on, but it continues to create poor air quality for, um, lower Canada, United States, and now Europe. Just another thing going on. Okay, let's take a look. We have had extreme temperatures kill at least 112 people in Mexico. And the big news this week is that this past week with record-setting heat, the planet recorded heat that was absolutely record-breaking, historical. The whole planet has never been this hot, according to their records. I mean... Well, that's scriptural. Oh, yeah. This is absolutely Bible prophecy coming together really fast. Because in... Uh, after the rapture takes place and, you know, we see the church in heaven in chapters four and five of Revelation, immediately following the church age of chapters two and three of Revelation. So chapter six is the beginning. Chapter five, we see the seals being opened by Jesus. And then in chapter six, we begin the kickoff of the 21 judgments of tribulation and the, you know, the changing of the Antichrist from the son of perdition and the man of lawlessness into the Antichrist at the very start of Revelation chapter six. So at this point in six and seven, we see the, the tribulation saints and we see where Jesus says, as they come out of their situation through martyrdom by refusing the mark of the beast, Jesus says to them, and John sees them, there's a number so great that he can't even count these people. But these people, Jesus says, will not hunger, not thirst, or be, you know, tortured by heat anymore. And so we see those three things coming right now, which is hunger, thirst, and also heat. And all this is lining up. We've got the famine. We're seeing the droughts. And not just drought, but polluted water. We just talked about that earlier. And now the heat thing. The Bible says a third of the planet is going to burn up during tribulation. This is not going to be a pretty sight for anybody who's left behind, which is a perfectly good reason for people to get their lives together right now. Because all of these things are beginning to to come into play the extreme heat is mounting up it's affecting the oceans and it's also affecting the you know the ocean life i mean this is all new and different to see the ocean temperatures raised and what will be the end game for uh, animal life and plant life in the ocean a heated up ocean I can tell you for a fact, I was reading an article this week about the su- the heat index of the area of Texas and surrounding states are really having struggles right now. And scientists are saying the human body cannot endure some of these temperatures. I mean, you get into some high temperatures and let's say their electricity goes out. I mean, this is serious. The human organs start to shut down. It is not a good look. And so this is really serious stuff that's going on. We just need the Lord now more than ever. No more messing around. You know, there's all these churches ignoring the warnings to be ready for the Lord's return. They won't even talk about it. They act like we're going to be here 10 or 20 years. You know, the way things are going, I I certainly hope not, Dina. (laughs) I don't want to be around for another 10 or 20 years. This is a, I mean, we're seeing a, a literal nightmare. There's so many shootings now, we can't even keep track of them. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's bad. Okay. Wow. Let's get back to our news. We got sidetracked a bit, but, you know, we want to talk about how all these headlines line up with 
Bible prophecy, and they're lining right up. Well, we had an article come out by Prophecy News Watch saying that America's breadbasket is at risk as drought conditions rapidly spread. And so the article says that, you know, if you look at the latest map from the U.S. Drought Monitor, you will see that almost all of America's heartland is now in some kind of drought, and much of Kansas is dealing with either severe or exceptional drought. And in previous articles, it says how this will impact winter wheat harvest. But now areas that grow most of our corn and most of our soy are also getting absolutely hammered by drought. And we did a whole episode on drought, too, with regards to the rivers drying up, the main tributaries of the planet. So this is all Bible prophecy coming together really fast, super fast, actually. A lot going on there. Oh, Hey, I want to mention this. We have a page, a Facebook page, and I mentioned that our show has so many resources for people to go to after the show is over. And one of them is End Time Signs in the Skies. And I really want to send people over there to subscribe, take a look at that. We had 3.3 million visits to that website last month. Isn't that a that's extraordinary, right? That's totally God. See what right. can be done when God anoints something. That page is obviously anointed by the Holy Spirit. That not that also shows you how urgent the times that we're living in right now for him to go and reach that many people. Just right. Yeah. So go over there and you'll be amazed. It is an amazing Facebook page. So check that out. Okay. Well, we talked earlier about the guy in Bahrain who the president of Bahrain, who showed up with his military robot. Well, here's another one. The militarization of robot dogs is terrifying picture of what is to come. And so the militarization of robot dogs is terrifying. Even more disturbing is that some of these robots are receiving open artificial intelligence chat GPT upgrades that make them even more intelligent. Okay, well, when they say intelligent, they're saying adding to their accumulative data that they can access, okay? I mean, some people say these things are even becoming sentient, but, you know, I'm just saying, okay? (laughs) But, okay, but, you know, they can draw up a lot of data, which can be very dangerous, And especially if they start allowing these to operate apart from human intervention. And I was watching one of these robotic dogs. I don't know if you have a picture or video, but they were arming these with flamethrowing devices. That's dangerous. Right. It's like, why would you do something like this? That's absolutely ludicrous. Oh, nothing could go wrong with that picture, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, let's get back to some other news. We do have pages, End Times Landslides and End Times Floods. Fantastic pages from the perspective that we got a lot of information you'll just be amazed by. We've got a house wobbling on a cliff after a flooded river destroys the foundation. This is just unbelievable. Heavy rains bringing flooding to Serbia. Uh, They've had issues with the Ukraine dam flooding and still dealing with that over there that was blown up just so much going on with the floods now we'll continue to talk about floods later but just real quick i want to sidetrack over to something i've been tracking for a while is this phenomenal amount of news on unidentified flying objects it's unbelievable it's in the news like every single day. And, yeah, it is. Okay, am I saying it's true or not true? You know, in my book, it's all demonic, okay? It's the powers and principalities of the air, and they're messing with people and their minds thinking, oh, you know. Because we've got Harvard and Stanford professors, we've got Congress, we've got Pentagon, we've got the Vatican, and Air, the United States government, and all a lot of governments, the UK government, all these governments are concerned about UFOs now, believing there are extraterrestrials. This is what they're talking about. Here's a headline. Russian submarine almost collides with an alien spacecraft underwater. Yeah. 
Oh, boy. Okay. Investigators have a second Roswell UFO debris field discovered. Yeah, these kind of headlines are popping up daily. Daily. Like, this used to be lunatic fringe, like 10, 20 years ago. Okay, so I believe one of the professors from maybe Harvard, they went out into the ocean because they said there had been a sighting of a UFO go down in the ocean, and they found these spheres that they discovered under the water and they said that they are comprised of metal that is not of the earth okay so (laughs) i'm just telling you what is going on and okay people are going to say well susan do you think there's such a thing as extraterrestrials literally christians are confused today they're so confused because they listen to all this stuff and they wonder oh did god make other life out there did Here's what. God made this universe in seven days. And he created the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars. And his focus has been on human life. He created man. He created woman. And there is such a thing as fallen angels. That's where the confusion comes in. This whole talk of extraterrestrials, aliens, these are demons. You know, somebody comes to me and says, are aliens real? Yes, they are demons, okay? (laughs) Demons are real. So can they do this kind of thing? Yes, they're doing this. They're very deceptive. They appear to people. How do we know that? Well, the Bible says very clearly in there, you know, in the Bible, and Dina, you can put this scripture up, it, it talks about how entertaining angels unaware. You might be entertaining angels, the Bible says. And so they, you wouldn't know if they were human or not. And so the same thing would apply to a fallen angel and often does. I believe these things are pure to people in different forms. And it's just like with angels of God, they have that capability apparently. So let's not confuse the matter. Let's Let's put it into biblical perspective and uh, not get all caught up in the world's agenda. And we know that the enemy is going to use this in a great way of deception. Where did the Christians go during the rapture? Well, yes, a mothership came and took them away. Okay. (laughs) Exactly. So that's what they're going to say. Right. Yeah. These people have been eating too much pizza and watching too many bad B movies, okay? Sci-fi movies. So, okay, that's where they come from. Okay, I just had to get that off my chest. I feel better. All right, let's take a look. The technology is changing. Elon Musk says they're getting ready to release self-driving cars, making the world a safer place, right? (laughs) Not. (laughs) And then, uh, how about this one? Oh, yeah, they've had terrible accidents with self-driving vehicles, you know? So... I don't know. But how about this one? Fly above the traffic in a car. The first flying car approved by the Federal Aviation Administration is out there. And, I mean, I keep thinking George Jensen's going to show up, right? Yeah. (laughs) The Jetsons. I love that show. All right. Well, let's continue on. We did have a scorching heating heat wave claiming 13 lives across southeast U.S. and straining the power grid. Santa Lucia's export crisis deepens as tropical storm Brett destroys major crops. And that's definitely one for the famine page. Here's another one. Extreme weather spells disaster for Chile's beekeeping industry. How very sad. We already have so many struggles with the bees. Yeah, we need our bees. We do, and our pollinators like butterflies. Actually, we talked about that in the last show, and they're already struggling from things like the towers, the cell phone towers, and some really bad insecticides that are out there that are killing them off. And so now the extreme heat's getting to them. So not going to be a good sight if we lose those uh, bees. Not at all. That's very bad and and definitely a sign that we're heading towards trouble. We've got five dead gray whales washing up on the Washington coast. And you have to ask yourself, is this from, you know, an overheated ocean? Well, we've talked about it before. Fukushima and other problems is causing us to lose the phytoplankton, which feeds these guys. 
all this is so serious. Oh, we've had heavy rainfall triggering deadly landslide in Dallas City, Vietnam. We've had volcano activity in the Philippines and just so much going on. We had a major derecho sweep over the Midwest, 1.2 million people without power because of that. Oh, we've talked about Putin in the past seeming to have a laundry list of dead bodies. Well, the vice president of the Russian bank, 28, plunged to her death. That's tragic. I mean, just wow. Anyway, the derecho I mentioned also flattens corn crops in Illinois with 100 mile per hour winds. I mean, before it was talking about crops in trouble from drought. Now we've got winds destroying crops along with, you know, the, the heat and the droughts. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely heading towards problems. And again, go to the End Time Famines page and you'll be able to see more about that. Putin of Russia narrowly escapes an assassination attempt as Russian Secret Service thwarted a Moscow Bridge explosion. So just so much going on, Dana. (laughs) It's just hard to keep up. We've got four people dead after a 4.9 magnitude earthquake in Haiti, as if they need any more to deal with. That country is really struggling with so much. They get hit over and over by one catastrophe to another. Oh, definitely. They definitely do. And I believe it's, you know, because of their allegiance to the enemy through their you know, demonic activities that they're involved in, the occult. They're heavily involved in the cult in Haiti and have been for a long time. And this is what happens, right? Mm-hmm. You bring that stuff on yourself. Okay, we've got dozens killed in a horrific Kenya road crash. At least 48 people killed when a truck lost control and plowed into other vehicles and pedestrians at a busy junction in western Kenya, you know, this last week. So oh, that wow. is... Yeah, we're seeing terrible tragedies like this all over the place. It's just endless. In Colorado and Eastern Plains, hail hail the size of baseballs came down. That's incredible. Just unbelievable. Uh, We're seeing large hail all over the planet. Week after week, we see this going on. And I just want to mention that the ongoing saga of the Zaporizhia, I guess you call it, in Ukraine continues to be under fire, threatened to be blown up by Russia, and also now Ukraine has come out and said they'll blow it up. Oh, boy. Uh Uh-huh. It's like, what's up with that? I mean, that's seriously messed up. I say, let's just... Everybody walk away from this thing, right? Yeah. I, I hate to make light of it, but it's it's like a no-brainer. We don't have to do this, right? But anyway, that's what's going on. I hope that they get that under control and these people get their senses together. Well, I mentioned that thing in Kenya. How about this one? Dozens burned alive in a bus crash in in India. 25 people have lost their lives after a bus overturned and caught fire. Isn't that awful? It's terrible. Yes. So these kind of calamities, I call them calamity because I believe it's inspired by demons. And demons, I think, are really in force around the planet. I mean, you have to understand, every, things are really getting evil. Just FYI, Netanyahu says Israel will not provide Ukraine with an Iron Dome for aerial defense. Yeah, and, he said that probably because Putin told him not to. I mean, he's got to worry about, well, we know Ezekiel 38, 39 is going to happen. The Gog, <laughs> Magog war. So Netanyahu's kind of... Well, he's got to deal with uh, Putin in Syria. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons. So, so. And so over the past few days, in the midst of this Russian rebellion, there have been signs of serious tension between Ukraine and Israel, at least in the diplomatic realm. So now Ukraine is slamming Israel before the world, you know, uh, over this matter. And so no surprise there. War is ugly. There's just no way around it. Mm -hmm. Never is a good thing. And pits people and and, uh, countries against each other. And that's the way this one is lining up. People are taking sides. You can see it forming up. Who's with who, you know? So 
Okay. Uh, we had a 5.8 earthquake hit Indonesia, damaging at least 93 buildings and killing one. And so that's tragic. That's a lot of damage, right? 93 buildings. Uh, oh, yeah. We had a tornado whip through Alberta, Canada, which is unusual. I, I've not known Canada to be known for tornadoes, so that's unusual. I guess it was a huge tornado also. We had a gang slaughter, get this, 46 women at a Honduran prison, and they brought with them machetes, guns, and flammable liquid, an official said. That was from AP News. That's that's unreal. You know, you just never heard these kind of headlines 10 years ago or 20. And we hear this on a daily basis. Seven days. I mean, wow. Okay, Fed Now, which is the effort to move us to digital financing, digital dollar, and all of that. They're conducting trial runs ahead of the instant payment service launch. And there is J.P. Morgan Chase and 40 other U.S. banks conducting trial runs right now. So that's that's not going to be a good end. Oh, here's, wow, look at this one. Las Vegas had record-breaking temperatures for a 300-day stretch. That's unreal. Of course, they're out there in the heat, so they're going to get it. Giant rains flood Chicago streets. Over 110 million on alert for dangerous weather over this 4th of July weekend that we came through. So they had a lot of flooding in Chicago, by the way. Also, Arizona have wildfire activity forcing more than 1,000 to evacuate from Scottsdale. Boy, that's scary. That Scottsdale is one of the most upscale areas in the country, and now they've got wildfires out there. That's not good. No, not at all. Well, you may not have heard of this one, but we had blood red waters, apocalyptic looking, turn up in Japan. And if you want to see activity about that, we have a Facebook page called End Times Blood Rivers. So go over there and and look at that. Just incredible uh, that these things keep happening. Well, when it comes to pestilence, we had a swarm of gnat-like insects have been spotted all over New York City. And I think you did a video on that, didn't you, Dina? Yes. They kind of invaded the city, went into the subways. They were kind of everywhere. We're seeing a lot of these type of biblical pestilence Mm -hmm. in America. Everywhere was in... Afghanistan was getting mm-hmm. invaded with locusts. We had the right. crickets in Nevada and Arizona. Right, right. I mean, they were really complaining about it. They're everywhere out there in the West in that one area. It's just they're all over their buildings, their houses. They have to go in and wipe them off their houses. They're just covering everything. I can't even imagine that. That's unbelievable. We had a lightning strike kill 31 cows in northern Alabama, and that's catastrophic. Yeah. And we're starting to see a lot of that kind of thing. Oh, you were asking about the wildfire activity in Canada. Here's the figure. 500 wildfires are burning across Canada. That's not a small thing. That's huge. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, and we talked about the Wagner Group coming up against Putin last week. I want you to know that Poland now has sent hundreds of counterterrorism police to Belarus border because they fear the Wagner Group is coming in. So they're using an additional 500 police officers to go to their border for protection from that Wagner Group. So Poland's kind of getting into the fray now israel has bought 25 more lockheed f-35 stealth jets in a three billion dollar deal so they're getting ready because they're not going to sit by and just let iran take them over right no they're not Mm -hmm. they won't they're getting ready to um uh, strike iran they're you know israel's always prepared for war yeah well bill gates he doesn't sit around He's, he's back at it again with, you know, promoting lab-grown chicken in the U.S., which was, uh, right, just approved by the FDA. Ew. Yeah, no telling what's in that stuff, right? That's just gross. And the U.S. House, our U.S. House floated a bill to defund the WHO, the WEF, and misinformation programs. That's another thing going on. And they need to be defunded, okay? Mm-hmm. 
I I think they're anti God. All three of those organizations, no no question about oh, it. Yeah, no question. Um. Also, in that same vein, Australia may be the next nation to crush free speech with an internet censorship law. And we know that, you know, Google will block Canadian news stories in response to Trudeau's Government Online Censorship Act. So, this, you know, we're going to call this the censorship creep. It's, the, it's creeping. It's starting to creep all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if Bill Gates is involved in this, but the World Health Organization, its One Health approach is moving more towards, you know, the eating of bugs. Yeah. Yeah. And we just want to see them sit down to a table of bugs first. Yeah. Yeah. Are they eating the lab-grown chicken? Are they crunching on the crickets themselves and the worms and the... Ooh. Just... (laughs) I don't know, but if there was ever a moment that we need our prophecy puppies, it is right now. Go for it, Romeo and Rocky. (laughs) I'm sorry. Nobody wants to eat a meal of cricket powder or worm grub powder. That just doesn't... Disgusting. Yeah, they want to swap that out for your steak dinner. Okay, I'm sorry for all the vegetarians. I just said it. (laughs) I... (laughs) We're not here to, you know, please don't write us about. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, South Africa homes destroyed and lives lost after floods in the KwaZulu Natal province. Floods everywhere. Mexico, flash floods in Chiapas, leaving one dead and one missing. Romania have one dead, dozens of homes damaged after floods in Arid County. We had intense hail battering parts of New Mexico. So just all kinds of crazy weather patterns. And we've talked about this in the past where we've seen, you know, places like uh, Venice drying up and places like Saudi Arabia turning into lakes and rivers. To me, this is God trying to get people's attention. That's my take on it. Yeah, I think you're right. He'll do whatever he has to do. Because he doesn't want and, want not even one person to perish, so... Exactly, exactly. We had a building collapse in a raging China flood water. And we also, not only did we see floods in China, they had a gigantic sandstorm completely swamp an entire city in China. It was a huge dust cloud formed a 300-foot high wall of sand in the city of Hamai in the northwest of the country. And it was apocalyptic. Which, yeah, we can classify a lot of stuff we're talking about as apocalyptic. Oh, this is tragic. We had more than 30 people killed in widespread pre-monsoon rain hitting Pakistan. And record-breaking rainfall hits western Honshu, Kyushu, causing fatalities, damage in Japan. Just, oh, Dana, you know, it's just unbelievable all the news we just can't talk fast enough okay Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) so much going on and i think we're gonna have to end it right here although we could just we could spend another hour talking about what's going on but we wanted to give everybody just a taste of what's going on in the world and it's it's unbelievable and it's it's weekly there's you know it doesn't slow down This stuff is going on everywhere and all over the planet. Nobody seems to be immune from what's happening. It's it's terrible. Anyway, I hope that what we've done here will have you wake up to what's happening in the world and consider turning your life over to the Lord Jesus right now because he's your only hope. I mean, there's no political group, there's no country, there's no organization, there's no business, there's nothing. There's no technology that's going to do what Jesus can do for you now. And you don't have to, yeah, I'm reading a lot of stressing headlines, yes, but if you know Jesus Christ, you don't have to stress over this. In fact, the Bible says not to worry. It even classifies worry as a sin. And in Revelation, those who fear are classified as sinners. That's because we have confidence in Jesus. We have to have our confidence in Jesus, and we have, and we know that he's capable. He can handle it. But 
we have to go with his program. And his program says, surrender to him now, give him everything, acknowledge what he did on the cross, repent of the sin that he died for, for you, profess your faith to others, that's profession to salvation, and also forgive everyone. We must forgive, or the Lord, the Father can't forgive us. Now, we also need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and surrender to the will of the Father. That is significant, and we need to become as disciples. What is that? It comes from the word discipline, and that means we need to get in the word. Why? Because is God a taskmaster? master and wants to punish us by making us read that bible every day no he wants you in that word because he's going to reveal the plans of the enemy against you if you don't read that book you're not going to understand that you have an enemy and he's out to get you at every moment of the day (laughs) he wants to take you out and the bible is there to pull the cover off of his plans and reveal truth to you. I know a lot of people, every time they go to read the Bible, they struggle with it. Well, that's not an accident. The enemy is trying to keep you from that book because he doesn't want you to know that you have freedom from him through Jesus Christ. Right, Dina? That's right. Amen. Well, that's about it for me. Um, I don't know if you have anything you want to add here, Dina. No, I think you said it all. Other than, (laughs) you know... um, When you do decide to choose Jesus, which I highly encourage you not to procrastinate, to do it today, you will fall in love with him. He is amazing and he is fun. He has a sense of humor. He has a personality. People think that God is up there, this cold God. He's not. He's a passionate God. He um, loves you. He adores you, in fact. He wouldn't have gone to the cross and went through what he went through, you know, if he didn't love you. In fact, there is no greater love than what the Father has for you. You will not find it on this earth. You will not find it, but you will through him. And he wants to give you eternal life forever in heaven. The Bible says that no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. And that is the truth. It doesn't stop here. You know, he promises us in John 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he has come to give us life and life in abundance. And he wants to give that to us here, but he has it for us for eternity in heaven. So the only thing I would say is um, don't wait. Don't procrastinate. Make Jesus your savior today. It will be a decision that you will never regret ever, ever, ever. And we're here for you. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have about Jesus or about these end days. And in fact, you can find these videos and other videos on Susan's YouTube channel, Marriage Supper of the Lamb Ministries. You can find them here. You can also find them on our BitChute channel, our Rumble channels, and also in podcast and Susan has a new website. Um, it's an awesome website, www.endtimesprophecycatalog.com. And I'll leave that information below this video, but go and check it out. She's got her books on there, which uh, was written through the power of the Holy Spirit. You can download them for free. There's lots of other resources on on her website. She also has a Another website, um, same type of thing. You can download all of the materials for free. So I encourage you to go and visit her. I'll leave those links below this channel. Come and visit us on our Facebook page, our Twitter page, and also on uh, a group that Susan has that is growing just incredible. Like she told you about, you know, signs in the sky Well, your group, Susan, I'll let you talk about your uh, Raptures Very Soon group on Facebook. Right. Well, not just really my group, uh, but it is the group of the ministry that we do for the Lord, and it's called Rapture is Very Soon, and the God is sending the people over there. We added a 1,000 last month. We added 100 a day, and obviously people are getting the understanding that we are in the end times, and they know it. They see it by the things going on around the world. Really come over and join us. We talk about rapture, which is the next thing on the prophetic timeline. 
And that's the other thing about the website, the new website. We have free books over there, absolutely free. You can just download them on your your electronic devices. They're free. And they talk about the next thing that's going to happen on the prophetic timeline, which is the removal of the church. And don't be thrown off by the word rapture because it's not in the Bible, but the word, you know, caught up is, and that's what rapture means. So... If the church that you're attending and the ministry people that you're around say nothing about this topic, they are not being led by the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to say it, because if they were, this is this is where it's at. The Holy Spirit is trying to warn people. And when the churches are ignoring this, then they, they have lost their way. So that doesn't mean that you have to follow suit. If you get close to the Lord and the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you're going to be shown this. So I challenge you to ask God, okay, what is right? Show me the truth. Show me, are we getting close to your return or not? And let the Holy Spirit lead you. And so anyway, but thanks for everybody for joining us week after week. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you sharing and subscribing to these channels that we have. Yes, yes. Subscribe, you guys. Like the channel. Share the videos. Share the posts on our Facebook pages and Twitter. And uh, leave a comment. We want to hear from you. We love hearing from you. We read all of your comments. But with all of this said, thank you, Susan, for bringing us these headlines. Thank you to all of you who have tuned in. And we will talk to you soon. God bless. (laughs) 